Okay, so we're into section three of key area four and we're on neurotransmitters and mood. This one will be a lot shorter than the last video. It's, it's two things really to learn about. Uh, so we'll cover that just now. Um, so neurotransmitters don't just control basic sensory and motor functions. So it's not just about pain or movement. There are billions of synapses in the brain, like more than possibly billions. Neurotransmitters in the brain can affect the mood and behavior of a person and substances that can tamper with neurotransmitters can also affect our behavior and our moods as well. This is the theory behind things like antidepressants. So let's look at natural antidepressants, okay? Endorphins are neurotransmitters that are released by the brain. So every person who is born should be able to release endorphins. Now, they stimulate neurons that help to reduce pain. That's our main function that we're gonna cover in this. The pain-killing properties of endorphins have been linked to improvements in mood, reduced symptoms of depression, all sorts of other physiological effects, but mainly it's that effect that endorphins have on mood. And you can see on the diagram there, there's also a couple of other natural neurotransmitters that you can produce, like dopamine, which we will look at, oxytocin, oxytocin and serotonin as well. These all have a positive, uplifting effect on mood. Also, what we'll look at in one of the next videos is the fact that illegal drugs can overstimulate some of these neurotransmitters and um, basically making you feel overly happy for a short period of time but then they cause bad effects later on to do with these neurotransmitters so ways to increase endorphins are through very intense exercise so that's top person up at the front the top right left there okay stress also helps increase endorphins only though we're talking short-term periods of stress uh, so we're talking things like um even events that stress you out, like roller coasters, that sort of thing. So we're talking em enormous amounts of short-term stress. We're not talking the kind of slow-burning, long-term stress that occurs. Uh, doing things like eating chocolate, that increases endorphins. Okay, so again, those happy chemicals that just make your, lift your mood a little bit. Uh, and extreme pain can also allow for the in release of endorphins as well. Okay, and part of the extreme pain is linked to the um, extreme exercise as well. Now, there has been an exam question that says, um, name something that somebody can do to increase their endorphin levels. The things that you can do are uh, extreme exercise and eating chocolate. You cannot make yourself stressed out. That's not a thing that can happen. And you shouldn't be hurting yourself in order to release endorphins. That's not healthy behavior. OK, so just watch out for language on exam questions if you do get one about that. Dopamine is the second happy brain chemical, the neurotransmitter that we're going to look at. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and it induces feelings of pleasure and happiness. Okay, And it's the neurotransmitter that is involved in the reward pathway. And that's underlined because you need to know a little bit about the reward pathway. When the body engages in behavior that is beneficial, your brain will release dopamine, effectively patting you on the head and going, oh, what a good human. You've just done something that I like. Okay. Dopamine activates the neurons in the brain that emit positive feelings in the person, making them more likely to do that behavior again. OK, now you've got to think about, well, wouldn't you do that behavior anyway? And the answer is no, especially not when you're a baby. Babies are rubbish at doing things that are good for them. OK, examples of behavior that activate the reward pathway, eating when hungry, OK, drinking when thirsty, having sex, positive social interactions. Now. There has been a few articles recently, particularly in BBC News, about dopamine and the reward pathway. There are different levels of thought on exactly how we respond to dopamine. Uh, it seems that dopamine is very much a chemical that is about want uh, rather than need. And it's a bit of an interesting thing uh, to, to, to think about the fact that our brain can learn stuff without us consciously thinking about it. If you go and Google those articles, basically, it's a really fascinating read and I highly recommend it. I've included links to it in the Sway and I've included links to it in the PLP as well. And I highly recommend it, particularly those of you thinking about psychology uh, courses, because dopamine and the reward pathway is just a really, really interesting example of uh, chemicals controlling the brain and human behavior. So surely we would do these things anyway to survive, like eating when hungry. No. A small child is really, really unreasonable and might struggle to eat or drink quite easily. It needs trained. The small child's brain needs trained. Eat food. It'll make you feel nice. Um, it, drink. It'll make you feel nice. It honestly does need trained this way. So the reward pathway helps make positive associations with food. So, for example, so that they eat it, even if it's not their favorite thing. So they put it in their mouth. Their brain gives them a little reward of dopamine. They go, OK, 
I'm going to do that again and again and again. And it encourages and reinforces that good behavior. Okay. We can use the reward pathway in order to train humans and animals is quite a lot of what we try and do in, in schools is we try and train your brains essentially to conform to good behavior and encourage the release of dopamine in your brain when you do good behavior. Uh, for animals, it's a bit more simplistic. It's a bit easier. We tend to use food or other rewards. So the idea is if a dog sits, you give it a bit of food that activates the dopamine pathway in its brain. So it starts to get that association between when it sits dopamine pathway activates, it feels good about sitting and obeying that instruction. So that's it. Summarize it. Endorphins is a neurotransmitter and its role in pain management and mood improvement. And it is produced in pain, stress, intense exercise and food like chocolate, for example. Uh, dopamine is a signaling molecule during the reward pathway. It induces feelings of pleasure and it is produced during beneficial or what your brain perceives to be beneficial behavior. Unfortunately, there are some uh, illegal drug type activities and some damaging behavior that dopamine pathway can actually encourage as well. But for now, let's just go for it's engaged with beneficial behavior. Right. So the next step, what we're going to be looking at is drugs that more sorry medicines that interfere with neurotransmitters and how they can work and be beneficial and then the final video is about illegal drugs